Alléluia. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Alléluia. We thank the Lord for all he does. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, amen. Is fire shut up in your bones? <laughs> but your yes is not even convincing. Yes! <laughs> yes! yes! Amen. Yes! 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 Yeah, that's convincing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, oh, close shifros kiti frondara kipre ondoro si. Laba ondoro fi kichi terende de debida. I bless your holy name, Lord God, for your word. I bless your holy name, Lord God, for your spirit. I bless your holy name, Lord God, for what you do among us. Let us, Lord God, be ground fertile, ground fertile, and bring fruit of evidence and evidence of fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. Hallelujah. Let's go directly in the word, if you please. Amen. We will take the book of her, Mark, Mark the, the, the word for today is, uh, you shall cross to the other side. So we take the book of Mark chapter 4, but um, we will we'll be focused on verse 35, but we're going to start a little earlier. Amen? So we're going to start from verse 30. So Mark chapter 4. From verse 30. Amen. Hallelujah. Chris, thank you for helping out with uh, the technical soldier. Hallelujah. So go ahead, please read the word for us. Mark chapter 4, verse 30. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Or with what comparison shall we compare it? Mm -hmm. Verse 3. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the, in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. Mm. Verse, 30, uh, verse 33, oh, 32. But when it is sown, it, is, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow L of it. Let me dwell on here just a little bit before we, we continue. The Bible said a seed. G give me verse 30. And he said, where unto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Remember the Bible says the kingdom of God is at hand. Hallelujah. And if the kingdom of God is at hand... It literally means that uh, you can stretch up your hands and bring it inside. It is available. Hallelujah. It is available. You do not need to do many sacrifices. You do not need to, to pay uh, access, hallelujah, in order to get that kingdom. But it says when that kingdom has made itself available, he wants to make you understand how he operates. Because to say I have the kingdom of God, I have Jesus in my life is one thing. But you cannot have that seed and then do not get any branch come out of it and any fruit out of it and any other people getting into those branches. Are you what I'm saying? When the kingdoms are manifesting in you, you might be like in insignificant. You might look like insignificant. But because it comes from God, it will not remain insignificant for long. It will grow. Even if it is among herbs and grass, you will outgrow the herbs and grass who attempted to overshadow you. Do you understand this one? Even if... You have found in the midst of chaff, you will outgrow it and then you will not be overshadowed and you will not die in because it comes from above. Let's read again. Verse 30. Verse 30. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God 
or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed. It is like a grain of what? Mustard seed. Why is it not like a grain of mango seed? Pay attention to the word of God. It's not just a seed. But it is a specific type of seed. The master seed. You see, the master seed is utilized for many things. For extremely many things. From cooking to healing. And it says it looks small. But the strength that is inside is greater than the mango. You know, when you look at the mango seed and you look at the master seed, the mango seed is greater. The avocado seed is greater. The what again? Huh? Up, up, even apple seed, thank you, is greater. But the master seed has an ability to grow differently. It does not need to have too many water under the ground. It just needs dirt. The other type of seed, oftentimes, need to be watered enough. Because you see, in Israel, they do not have that much of what? Rain. Because they were a desertic place. So the master seed has the ability even to grow in the desert. In the dry places. So he, he, he was, it was irrelevant of where he was found. He will find his way to come out as long as he is connected to the earth. As long as you are connected to God, it is irrelevant of where you are positioned, you will come out. Are you know what I'm saying? All you need is to be a right seed. Uh, Father, bless your name. Remember, fire of the word of God in your bones cannot get you be quiet. How much you prophesy for your life? <laughs> you see? You get, get it right. When you pray, and then you say, Lord, oh, help me go further. That's good. But that's not where God called you. I prophesy I go further. Are you what I'm saying? Do you understand that? Your petitions and your prayer are not and should not be a hindrance from the command of God unto you to speak into the future. You're looking at me. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, son of man, professor. But professor to what? To dead bones, dry bones. And if you notice in the book of Ezekiel, I believe chapter 37, it says, God says, can death bone leaves? That's the word God says. And then Ezekiel say, ah, it is very dry bones. But God did not tell him it was very dry bones. But when he saw it, he made the assessment. He said, this one is not just bones. It is, <laughs> it is very dry bones. God is intending to make you not look at the situation. He's intending to look at... Amen. Can they bones... It's fine, it's fine. Go ahead. It's fine. Can they bone leaves? When the master seed is planted, even if it is difficult place, even if it is complicated place, it has the ability to penetrate the earth, develop roots, ground itself, grow up, overshadow, bring branches, and carry on with other things that comes into seeking a, uh, a... Give me back that word. Can you please? Uh -huh. It is like a grain of... Mustard seed. Which? Which when it is sown in the earth... The time it is sown in the earth is what is less than all the seeds that be in it is earth. less than all the seed that be in earth but 
But when it is sown, when it is sown, it groweth up. Now let me put two things together. It does not say when it is sown, it is watered, it is taken care of, and then it's sown. He, he just connects two things. When it is sown, it groweth up. If you are sown into Christ, you cannot remain at that level. When you ask, it says when. Amen? So if it is not the when, then it cannot be a result. So, but when it is sown, it grow it up. Hmm. All it has to be done is to be You see, you are like that seed, right? All you have to do is to connect to one page of the word of God. No, not one page. Uh, I was trying to say one word of the word of God. It's, it's all you have to do. If the only thing that you can say is Jesus, is enough. To stop prophesying into the future that God has called you into. He says, when it is sown, it grows up. How much of the word of God do you have in you? <laughs> Amen? Even if it's just Jesus, the name that is above all other names, Continue for me, please. Verse 33. Uh, uh -huh. And with many such parables spake he... No, 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 no. Let's go back. Let's go back to the word. Verse, Verse 32. 32. Uh -huh. But when it is sown, it uh -huh. groweth up uh -huh. and becometh greater than all herbs. And becometh greater than all herbs. And shooteth out great branches. And shooteth out great branches. Say, Lord, let me be an evidence Lord, let me of your kingdom. Are you following? Listen, this is this burns in my in my heart. Listen, you have to have a spirit that refuses your condition more than that refuse the will of God. You know what I'm saying? The condition that is not growing up, that is not bringing up, that is not bringing those fruit, you got to have a spirit that refuses to remain stagnant. You got to have a spirit that refuses to say, this one mm -mm, it is not my portion. It is not my portion. Even if I am among herbs, I do not need to be among garden. Even if I am among herbs, it is not my portion. Even if I am among herbs, I will not grow like herbs. You feel what I'm saying? It was not planted in the garden to be garden. Planted among herbs. But doesn't doesn't matter. Because the source of that seed comes from another great tree. You know what I'm saying? If God that you worship is great, then you cannot be low. It's, it's not possible. You are to be an evidence of the express word of God. Huh. Hey, Jesus. That realization is what makes you refuse to be stagnant. I told you last time, a stagnant water does not carry life of fish. When you look at the Dead Sea, how many fish you have inside? Isn't that water? 
Fish need active water to develop and to multiply. Put a fish in your aquarium. Put another one. They eat each other. <laughs> they don't develop. <laughs> anyway, fish need active water. God says you are a master seed. That it does not matter where you are sown. That's why it says, I send you in the world. I do not send you in the sense. <laughs> Amen. I do not send you in the church either. <laughs> Amen. I send you in the world. Even if it is among wolves. Amen. Let your good deed be seen of man so that they can glorify your father who is in heaven. He said it groweth up and shoot out branches. Give me back the word. Verse 32. Verse 32. Uh -huh. But when it is sown, it, uh -huh. it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs. Mm. And shooted out great branches. Uh huh. So that great branches. Uh huh. So that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Listen, listen carefully. God just told me something. He said, the reason why it was hidden among herbs, it was not to prevent its growth, it was to prevent the herb, to, the, the bird to eat it. So it looked like it was hindered, but it was actually hidden. Hallelujah. Sometimes the situation around you, the people around you, can be observed or perceived as herbs, as problem. But sometimes... They are the one that God utilizes to prevent you to be eaten up too quickly. Does it make sense? God has a way of turning around situation that you see in a certain way. And his expertise is to make sure that you grow and you shoot out great branches. And then the Bible says, the same bird that would have seen that um, seed and eaten up that seed, now comes back and find shadow. Mm, Lord Jesus. Oh God, thank you, thank you. You see, he said literally, he will dress a table in the presence of thine enemies. The bird was then an enemy for the seed. But all the seed needed to do was to connect to the ground. And as soon as it connects to the ground, God gives him the strength to grow. And when it grows, he does not just grow. The Bible says it shoot out what? No, no, great branches. So that the fowl of the air, you see, when David talked, he said, My fowl, my fowl, the, the follower, the follower. They tried to catch me like a bird. But the same are now looking at the, uh, at the beauty of the branches that are developed. And now they come and they take. Shadow under it. You need to prophesy in your life. More than you pray in your life. Let me say that again. You need to prophesy in your life. More than you pray in your life. Paul said. I pray in tongues more than where? Who? All of you. So it means you also prophesy more. 
Are you what I'm saying? Uh, do you, you get my, my point? He also prophesied more. The Lord Jesus, he was a man of prayer, but he was also a man of the word. So you cannot only pray. Prayer must get you into the place where you shoot out great branches. You must shoot out great branches. Because prophecy is a conviction of the hearing of the voice of God. Prayer is a petition of your heart unto God. When you are convinced that God has heard you, you turn into praise and prophecy. When you are not convinced, let me show you how it works. Ask me my microphone. Ask me to give you my microphone. Where would your microphone go ahead? Speak in that. Please give me your microphone. Come over here. Let me explain how it works. Go ahead. Please give me your microphone. No, I want you to convince me to give him my, my microphone. <laughs> Please, can I have your microphone? I want you to convince me. If I'm not convinced, you will not have it. <laughs> Please give me your microphone. I want to use it to minister. I, I, I need to be convinced. <laughs> Go ahead. Try. <laughs> but you see you are in a position of prayer I just talk about prophecy in a position of prophecy this microphone belongs to me give it back to me You see it as your possession. You don't see it as a lending or borrowing. You will not be a borrower. You will be a lender. Until, because you see, all he was doing was uttering a petition of prayer. I was hearing it. I was not convinced to grant it. I could have granted it. I could not have granted it. But if he turns it around and he speaks to the future, he says, future, before I was born, God designed you so I may enter in. You can only receive me in. Tell to your neighbor, professor. Say, Professor, more than you pray. Do you believe? Do you believe what the Spirit of God is saying? You, Professor, more than you pray. You, Professor, more than you pray. Prophetes, plus que tu ne pries. When you go in the house of a strong man, do you request? Hallelujah. You do what? You bind him. You come with authority not to negotiate. You don't come to ask if he's willing. Can you? Will you please? <laughs> The Bible says you enter the strong man's house. The guy is standing like this on your properties. And then you come. Hey, brother, how you doing? <laughs> you know, um, last time mm, I saw you, you were passing by. By the time you finish, he will bind you. <laughs> Tell to your neighbor, professor.
The Lord Jesus went to the fig tree. The Bible said when he arrived, you got to have that mindset. Let the same mind that is in Christ be in you. The Bible said when he arrived, he did not care that the fig tree was not in his time of a, uh, 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 bearing fruit. Say, let the same mind that is in Christ be in me. Ah. When I understand I am a child of the king and he has given me the earth, I can only put demand, not request. Hallelujah. He comes in, it's not the time Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. It's not the time for the fig tree to even bear fruit. So the fig tree was naturally in its normal course. But when the Lord Jesus arrives, he said, just because I'm here, you must manifest fruit. I don't care about is your time or is not your time. I am the one who put you there. So when I come, I don't request you to give me fruit. I demand you must have fruit. The fig tree tried to play, you know, miss. Try to play CC. No, Lord, you know, last year, around spring and summer, I was fruitful. But you know, we are just in the time of winter. So I kind of. No, Lord, you see, this is the time of fall. It's fall for you, not fall for me. All I need is my presence to change the circumstance of the nature. Hmm, Lord, help me with this. The Bible says when he arrived, there was a nature movement of uh, the, 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 in the sea. Um, how do I call it? Uh, when he was in the sea with the, the disciple. Uh, the psalm, thank you. <laughs> hey, Lord Jesus, let the same mind that is in you be in me. He sees the storm. He's in the boat with them. He looks at the storm. He say, be still. And the people say, ah, what manner of man is this? That even the nature obey Jesus. Let the same mind that is in you be in me. He sees the fig tree and he is hungry. He does not ask whether it is the normal course. You know, remember last Sunday? The Bible, I mean, the word of God told us that we need to be above normal and average. I do not care that it's not your time. I'm hungry. You must produce. Professor, more than you pray. If God commands you to professor and you're not prophesying, well, you do what you sin. Amen. Professor. Go back to the word, please. Let me bring my the book. Let's read through verse 35. Verse 33. And with and with many such parables spake he, he the words unto them as they were able to hear it. 34. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Verse 35. And the same day when the even, the even, the even, mm -hmm. when the even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, 
let us pass over to the other side. I want you to understand two things. At the time he starts speaking to them, he was not in the day. He was in the night, in the evening, in the evening, if you want. At the time he starts speaking to them, he was in a time where things were not clear. It was because the sun was no longer giving clarity into the sea. Clarity into the earth. Light into the earth. Hallelujah. I want you to perceive this. He did not ask them to pass into the other side when it was day. This should have been reasonable because then they would have seen better to navigate their way through. The Bible says when he asked them, it was at evening. If you understand this one, you will have breakthrough. He asked them to operate and to do something when everything was shadowed. Everything was darkened. Everything was less clearer. Everything was difficult. Then he said, let us go. He did not say, can we go? Hallelujah. He did not say, he did not inquire if they have enough light to brighten the la traversée, how we say that, the, the crossing. He did not inquire if it was safe to cross over. He did not inquire. He saw the evening. He saw the day. The Bible says the same day. So it means he knew that we cross over, but he did not ask them to cross over in the daytime. In the daytime, he took the time to teach them. And in the nighttime, he wanted them to demonstrate the evidence of the word he taught them. Because he already told them that as long as you are connected to me, to the ground, even if there is herb, your fate will be protected. Your future will be protected. Even if it looks around you like herb that will prevent you to grow, it is in fact, I'm hiding you from being eaten up too early. Now, I want you to put in practice, let us go to the other side. To say, your neighbor, you shall cross to the other side. 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 In that case, then you need to have two things the word and the matter. The word of God and the matter. When the matter is the tools, the boat. When you couple what God said with tools that he put in your hand, you can go further. I read again. When you couple what you heard from God and what he put in your hand, you can do, do and go further. Let us go in the evening on the other side. Why, Lord, will not you ask me to go on the other side when it is more clearer? The sea has anything inside. Sharps. What else? Uh, whatever. If in that time of the night we fall in, Lord, why should we travel to the other side in the night when we had the whole day? Christ says clearly, he says, it is not the sun that gives you the light. It is the word, his word that gives you light. For the word of God says what? The word of God is what? Is what? To, to my path and a lamp unto my. Phew. 
All you need is to be convinced that he said it, so you prophesy to it. You are praying to receive in order that your heart be joyful. But as you pray, he said, believe that you have received. But once you believe that you have received, it means you break into certainty of what you have prayed for. So you start now speaking by prophesying it. If you always pray, oh Lord Jesus, help me. It's not bad, but it's not the answer. He is willing to help you. Are you following? He is willing to help you. Are you willing to go to the other side even in the night? He knew a storm would come. He knew a, an adversity will come. He knew challenge will come. And for the matter of fact, on the sea, the storm is more rising in the night than in the day. So he wants them to go in the night when there was more possibility to have a storm. He just taught them. He did not want them to pray the way out, but to decree and declare the way out. Because before they started going, he told them, let us go. Are you following what I'm saying? If you get it right, you will not confuse what I'm saying because I'm not talking about you don't pray. I'm saying when God has spoken unto you the word, you don't pray that word. You speak that word. You assert that word. You prophesy that word. You tell to the kingdom of the principalities. You tell to the kingdom of the world, I am different. You tell them, I am called. You tell them, I am chosen. You tell them I am appointed. And my destination is not here, it's there. Before I start going, he told me, let us go there. So, when they come in the boat to cross, do they see a trouble? Yes. Let's, let's read back, please. Verse 35. And the same day when the even was come, mm. he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships mm -hmm. and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full hallelujah amen a great wave storm of wind arose and the waves brought the water of the sea into the ship Do you notice that the Bible said that the ship was full of water? But it did not sink. It did not flip over. You are more worried about the water that comes in your ship than the destination you told you to go to. He is in the boat. He himself will not sink. He will not drown. Like, what was it there? Drown, thank you. He's in the boat. 
The reason why they were confused is because they forgot that he was in the boat and he was not being drowning. He started by telling them, let's go on the other side. Then he was in the boat with them. That's two elements that should have given them enough strength to prophesy. The altar of the nature told me to go on the other side. And the altar of the nature is in my boat. And I worry about the waves. It was because the fire of the word were not shut up in the bones. They forgot it. They forgot what is said before they started. When you forget what the word of God told you you are, eventually you will look on the waves and not to the destination. It was a command. It was not a proposition. It was not a question. It was not a supposition. It was not an analytic. It was a command. Let us go. And on the top of this command, he also was in the boat. What was the name of Jesus? Huh? Yeah, Jesus. It was Jesus. All they had was one word, Jesus. <laughs> all they had was the knowledge of Jesus, that's all. All you need is the knowledge of Christ. There were little ships that were around going with them. But the help were not there. The help was in what? No, more than that. It was what? Remember? The knowledge of what he said. You're right. The help were in the knowledge of what he said. For he said before they start, let us go. To the other side. So it, it means, are you able to arrive on the other side? Yeah. Can Jesus see that it will be storm? Can he see that your ship will be full of water? And what did he tell you? Let's go to the other side. When? At evening. He told you, let us go to the other side. He did not want you to have light to see your way. He wanted you to have his word to know your way. Ha! Ah. You did not, he did not want you to have light. Daylight, sunlight to see your way. He wants you to have his word, to know your way. So he provides you the certainty that you will arrive. If you are not arriving, it's because you forgot that he told you you will arrive. Say, I will arrive. I will arrive! Jesus, I see myself there. It is not possible I was over there. I am there. Are you what I'm saying? The storm in my boat does not define my destination. Do you know? That the water that was in the boat helped the boat to be more heavier against the wave. 
so that the boat did not flip over. Like uh, the grass that was over the seed helped the seed to be hidden and not hindered. Because let me tell you something. In a matter of a boat, the weight of the boat, when the under is constructed, you always remain floating. And that principle is what helped today to have big ship. When you look at those big ship, do you see the container and the weight they carry? Do they sink because they are too heavy? Wrong mindset. They had a little ship. And the water was beating against it. But there was also wind. What would have made them flip over could have been possibly the wind earlier than the wave. So the wave helped them to have consistency of weight. Because the Bible says it was now full. You put your eyes on the wrong thing. You will be worried for nothing. Two things. I will arrive at the other side. And the second thing is in my boat. Then I can hear son of man pro Huh. And no, I'm, I'm not in mode prayer. I'm in mode prophecy. Because now I know the word he has spoken. When the prophet professor, it's because he heard it. Hallelujah. You cannot tell me you did not hear the word of God. You cannot tell me that you did not hear the word of God. I know. So I speak. Job said, declare, uh, declare a thing and it shall be established. Hmm. Hey. You know, I can be a trillionaire, but just give me about 2,000 billion, <laughs> which is 2 trillion. Amen? 2,000 th billion is 2 trillion. Am I right? If God tells you you will arrive and you see the waves bring the water in your boat, say, Lord, thank you for consistency of weight. Amen. <laughs> Don't focus on the problem. Even in the world of business is, 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 is a, how we call it, a principle. Even in the world. They tell you, you have a problem, how are you going to mitigate it? So the problem is there, but what you need to do is to see the out. And to get out of it. So you got to see how you're going to get out of it. Not how the problem is big. In the world. He says the children of the world are what? Wiser. That's why you need to refuse to be less wiser. I told you... Lord Jesus, thank you. S uh, Friday, we were praying, and the boy, Matthias, he was praying, and he said, God can use a shoe to make your eyebrow. And then, you know, in my mathematic mind, <laughs> I'm like, But he was prophesying. Because the word of God said that water brought forth what? The, no, the fish, water. 
He said, let the, the, the water bring forth fish. And the air, the wind, brought forth bird. Tell me, on, between wind and bird flesh, how does he do? Tell me, between water eh, and fish, how does he do? Tell me, between dust and you, how does he do? So when you started getting off the limitation of the mind, I said you can look at this bag and then start crazy. Lord, I pray that this bag will be the sign of a house. What will this bag do with the house? Because in your spirit, you can use anything from the kingdom of God as much as it is a raw material to transform into anything. The power of transformation. You pray to have a position so you will have money. And the Lord Jesus said, just go into the fish. Literally. Normally, it is the Federal Reserve that fabricate, produce money, right? Instead of looking at the Federal Reserve, he said, look into the fish in the water. How does this is reasonable? Because he does not want you to be average and Normal. When the prophet were prophesying, at the time they were prophesying, what they were prophesying were mathematically impossible. It was scientifically impossible. Do you remember how Elisha took the, um, yeah, and then he was what? Floating on the water against gravity. The one who created the law of gravity is the author of that gravity. If you can allow your mind to agree with his mind, hallelujah, then you will utilize what he made in the earth as a raw material to transform into anything. Just believe. Hmm. Just believe. Let us go to the other side. The water you see in your boat is to help you and prevent you to flip easy. <laughs> Instead of being preoccupied, hey, there's water in the boat. <laughs> there's water in the boat. <laughs> you will get all your strength out. And when you have taken all the water out of the boat, and then you flip. <laughs> Isn't the Bible says that they do not be dismayed by the fiery trial that comes your way? That the purpose of it is that it will build in you endurance. And your capability and your capacity of manufacturing from the word of God will increase. And your prayer will be transformed into prophecy. You will speak because he has spoken. When you say, Lord, I know I will arrive, it's good. But when you also say, future, I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Take me in. 
you are certain that the future cannot go without you. Are you following? Joshua did it. He wanted to win the war. He told to the nature, however you want to do, do. But you don't go nowhere until I'm finished. Hallelujah. You son, however you want to do, do. But me, Joshua, I tell you, stay there until I'm done. Do you believe? <laughs> the word of God says you are a little master seed. All you need is to connect to the ground. That's all you need. He's not asking you to have complicated the strategies. He just asks you to connect to the ground. And you will sprout. Your mind must not allow you to see limitations. Your mind must convince you that God is unlimited. So when your mind starts producing limitations, cast it out. Cast it out. You, you, you have to learn to cast out your thought. Are you what I'm saying? When the thought comes in your mind that is contrary to the word, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. You must learn to rebuke the thought that are contrary to the will of God that told you to go to the other side. To advance. To prosper. To prophesy. You must tell to those thoughts that are contrary to what God has established in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. It says, bring captive. Hallelujah. Every imagination to the knowledge of Christ. So, start with your own imaginations. When they are not in the knowledge of Christ. So, in this case here, the knowledge of Christ will be what? Will be, I know he told us go to the other side. And I see now the boat is being beat up. My imagination sees me uh, under the mouth of the shark. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I cast down that imagination by bringing into my mind the reminder that he told me a command to arrive on the other side. I want you to dwell on this one and to create inside of you enough fire in your bones to refuse you to remain quiet against your future. Give me the word, please. Verse 38. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace. Be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Verse 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Amen. Amen. Who knows that the Lord is speaking to him right now? He says, How ah, is this that you are so fearful? How ah, is it that you have no faith? He told them in the day about the master seed faith. And he tried them in the night. But you see, Christ's goodness did not let them perish even when they were in lack 
of faith. How much more would they do if they have faith? He could have said, listen, I taught you. I told you what to do. I spoke to you. You didn't listen. You're going to die. He could have said that. He's God. He's free to do that. The Bible says he gives mercy to whosoever he wants to give mercy. He's compassionate to whosoever he wants to be compassionate. But he decided to do the work for them and to remind them, have I not told you that all you have to do is to trust, believe, prophesy? Have I not commanded you to prophesy? You see, the Bible says, give me back the verse uh, 39. And he arose and did what? And rebuked the wind. Is, isn't the Lord Jesus a man of prayer? Does he not know how to pray? Was this, was this a prayer? That was not a prayer. I'm sorry. This was a command. That was a declaration. That was not a prayer. Hallelujah. They were the one who fabricated a prayer. Oh, Lord. Look at the boat. It's been watered down. Don't you see we perish? Hey, Lord Jesus. The storm is too much. He said, but how is this that you have forgotten the word I told you before you started? Shema, Israel. Remember, Israel. Listen, Israel. How is it that you have forgotten the word that I told you before the storm came? I do not want you to pray concerning the storm. I want you to decree and to declare against the storm. And he arose and rebuked the wind. And he spoke to the nature. Ah, hallelujah. He spoke to the nature. He says, see, hey Lord, do you realize that he knows that the nature has hearing to hear his command? You see, if you see your child and you know it's your child and you know you are the father, or the mother. And if your child misbehave, because you know you have authority, what do you do? But you know it because you know your child is hearing too. You know you are not talking to a deaf child. You know that you are speaking word into a child who also hears. So there are two things over here that makes you speak. One, you know you have authority. To discipline. And second, you know that the one you're speaking to has a right to hear what you say. So you speak with two conscience not in your mind. I have the authority and you can hear me. The Lord Jesus saw the nature the same way. He saw the nature as something that can hear what he says. So he tells to the nature, be still. <laughs> because it was the same word that caused the nature to come into existence. So they can hear it. So it was not limited into the hear that he created. You got to refuse to have your mind limited by the world. Give me 
ik bij door. Verse 39, Mark chapter 4, verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Is in the place of manifestation where you speak once and it happens. It's a place of manifestation where you decree and it happens. That mind of Christ, that mind of conviction that is said. That word that you speak, that you prophesy, and that you know, it takes form. Continue. Verse 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that he have no faith? Let me, let me ask you, how do you know you are fearful? Every situation you find yourself in and you ask yourself, how am I going to do it? Is fear. Fear is a big brother of doubt. Doubt is a cousin of anxiety. Anxiety is a sister of worry. He says, worry about what? How much? Nothing. But let your petition be known. It is tough because the wave is beating it. And then you look. I don't know how I'm going to do it. And the Lord Jesus told you before the wave started that you're going to make it. So when the wave starts, remember that. Every full water that has come in your ship, remember, will not make you sink. You know, when my wife was pregnant of Abby the first time, she had, before she was pregnant, she had complained that she had back pain. And she was complaining about it a lot. And I thought to myself, I said, ah, ah we should be able to carry a child. Because I was thinking, when your belly grow, is a lot of flesh that goes around, and I have to grow. So, ah, will you carry this if you have a back pain, a spinal big? And one day, as I was about my worries, the Lord suddenly reminded me that if He put a child in. You will be able to also carry it out. So I had to come in a place of finally agreeing that he will be able to do so. Before she got pregnant, her back pain, I was not hearing about it anymore. And suddenly she got pregnant. And, and wonderfully, she carried her pregnant like as she was a, a, a 10 years old. Going around with the belly, and, and then people. Some we, the first time we went to Ashley, I said Ashley, um, Ashlane, Ashlane. We went to a prayer time, 
And you see the people who are not pregnant, they are sitting when praise is time. They don't, they just sit down. And the pregnant woman was around, praise the God. And you see the belly, go, praise the God. And so the worry people and the sambala, hey sister, <laughs> you, 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 please sit down. That's the sambala. Even though they told her that she's going to give birth like a, a, a Hebrew woman. <laughs> Amen. But God is capable. Don't look onto the limitation. I know it can be challenging to have conscience of a situation that is difficult. And to see through the situation, victory. I know it can be challenging. But for your mind to have the right set, you need to remember first what the word said. Then you need to speak to the future. Because the future cannot go without you. Am I, am I speaking to somebody? Have you ever watched those movies? I mean, you know, where it's kind of like a, everybody freeze and time is frozen. Never watched something like that? If God has to hold the clock so that you will not be behind, he will do it. He's the master of time. Are you know what I'm saying? If he had to hold the clock so that you will not be behind, he will do it. Trust it. The future. If he told you you will arrive in the future, how can a future go without you? Tell me. So instead of Feeding any worry or anxiety on how I will do it. Ah, you know you're going to do it because you're still alive. Mm? Other than that, there will have been uh, singing your funerals. Mm -hmm. Oh, she was a great woman, mm, but she's in the, in the berry. She's gone. He was a great man, mm, but he's gone. He's finished. His time has arrived. He's gone. He will, he will probably be in a better place. Amen? <laughs> but the reality is that you know you will arrive because you're still alive. When the ticket over your breath has expired, which worry you will have? Imagine somebody who has a lot of debt. And that. Even the debt stop pursuing him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even the debt stop pursuing him. And yet on that debt there was his name. You need to die in Christ. So that worry will not have your name anymore. You need to die in Christ. Why will she, should I worry about however when he, I know that he said I will arrive to the other side? Do you believe you will arrive to the other side? Yeah! I say, do you believe that you will arrive to the other side? How do you know you will arrive to the other side? Stand up. Lord God, arrive in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll run to the other side. Hallelujah. You think too much. Like, thinking calculation. I give you $1,000. Now you start calculating it. Okay, this one, if I do this way, this one will be this one, this one will be this one. And I say, okay, I give you $1,000. Take care of you. And you would think, okay. <laughs> but you see, the $1,000 I give to you, you did not have it. 
See what I'm saying? So if I give to you, then you can have even more. So instead of worrying on how you have to deal with that, if you want to pay for yourself a shoe that costs 500, pay it. Buy it. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Do not allow anything in this world that will limit you on how much and how far you can advance. If God gives you the vision, he will provide the provision. The Lord has spoken to me strongly. It's time to get off the dead weight. Because it's time of transformation. The caterpillar had to get rid of his dead weight so he can fly. And I told to the Lord, I will not carry with me no dead weight. Are you what I'm saying? When you are posed, you are assigned to fly. Even if you want to help the dead weight, you will also go down. I told you last time, an ego does not carry that high for long a dead animal. No. An ego carry that high a living animal. So he's over there. He sees a living animal that is running. Then he comes. He catches it and carry her until he dies. But when he's dead, he drops it. Or if he's dead on the floor, he can eat it. Because a, a, live, a, a live thing is less weighted than a dead weight. Are you, are you know what I'm saying? And I told, when you go to war, if you have a soldier that is wounded, you carry. But if you have a soldier that is dead and you carry, then you are a candidate for dead. I say for dead. <laughs> for death. So you got to ask and tell, I mean, you got to tell to yourself, the Lord has spoken to me before. Let us go to the other side. I know I will cross the other side. If the grass and the herb is overshadowing my seed, then I know it is not hindrance. It is being hidden. If the water is beating against my boat and the water is entering my boat, then I know it is giving me consistency of weight. So I flip not easy. So that my mind will see differently. And I will focus on my destination. And because I focus on my destination, then I know that this storm was not supposed to be on my way. So I will tell it, quiet down. Let's finish. Give me the last. Verse 41, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Aye, aye, aye. Is the Lord Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever? You need to prophesy more than you pray. Or if you cannot prophesy more than you pray, prophesy as much as you pray. If you pray 30 minutes, prophesy 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because sometimes prayer is formed like a like like a uh, let, let, let me put it this way. 
prayer is intended to carry you into something divine. Not to comfort you to stay on earth. That, does it make sense? Prayer is intended to carry you into that flame. Because a, a type of prayer that you pray that is going nowhere is only a psychological comfort. You feel what I'm saying? Is emptied and devoided. You just have a feeling that you have uttered something. That's not what God is asking you. You are to be praying to be carried. And when you are carried, you can only prophesy. Because you get into the knowledge that he has said so. And because you get in that knowledge he has said so. He said when you pray, believe. Then you receive. But when you pray and you only pray, you cannot receive. But you believe because now you are convinced and you prophesy because you know. Father, I pray thee that in every bones of our body will be hidden the fire of your kingdom. Lord God, shut it up in our bones to make us and cause us not to remain silent. Father, I pray thee that before every nature, every opposition, every challenge, we will not see it as a limitation of the advancement, but we will see it as a giant to be taken down. Lord, I pray that every mindset contrary to your will will make way to obey. I pray that every understanding that is not of you will make way and obey. I pray we remember more of your promise and the certainty that future will not go without having us inside. I pray, Lord God, that that certainty be and wrap our mind, wrap our heart, wrap our soul and our spirit, knowing I shall arrive to the other side. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen, amen.